Why is this happening? One of the most significant rivers in the world, the Euphrates, flows from Turkey through Syria and Iraq. For more than 10,000 years, this extensive river has been the primary source of water for the area. However, due to terrifying circumstances, this ancient river is currently drying up, plunging millions of people into an unheard of drought. Even bizarre and old discoveries have been made beneath this parched riverbed. The Euphrates River's water level is so low that 5 million people would not have access to safe drinking water. What does this entail for the future of humanity? Is the Euphrates River drying up because the prophecies of Revelation are about to come true? Or is there another factor we need to be aware of? Join us as we explore the terrifying discovery under the Euphrates River that scares scientists. In human history, the Euphrates River has a special significance. The Euphrates and the Tigris, two enormous rivers, served as the banks on which ancient Mesopotamia civilization developed. When men first began farming and other agricultural activities, which eventually spread to other regions of the world, the Euphrates supplied a reliable source of pure water. The Euphrates was one of the first rivers mentioned in the Bible because according to biblical sources, it was one of the four rivers that flowed from the Garden of Eden. The Euphrates played a significant role in determining important events like wars and invasions, which in turn impacted how people and power were distributed throughout much of Asia and North Africa. The southern lowlands of what is now Iraq had the richest soil in the Near East, thanks to centuries of flooding from the Euphrates and Tigris rivers. The river, which is 1,740 miles long, is thought to be Asia's longest. Before flowing into the Persian Gulf, the river travels from Turkey through Syria and Iraq. The Euphrates River, however, is in danger because of Iraq's neighbors Turkey and Syria's water policies, a two-year drought and years of mistreatment by Iraq and its farmers. The river is also significantly smaller than it was a few years ago. The Bible also has two verses that predict the Euphrates River would eventually run dry. God pronounces judgment against the leaders and smart men of Babylon, as well as against its pretend prophets, soldiers, steeds and chariots and riches. Then God says a drought on her waters. They will dry up, for it is a land of idols, idols that will go mad with terror. Jeremiah 50:38. The Euphrates and Tigris rivers are Babylon's water sources. Both rivers are currently drying up. Is this Jeremiah's prophecy coming true? When Cyrus the Persian king attacked Babylon in 539 BC, these prophecies most likely came to pass by military action. During the Great Tribulation, which corresponds to the sixth bold judgment of Revelation 16, the prophecy will be realized. According to the Greek historian Herodotus, Cyrus sufficiently diverted the Euphrates water to permit his army to enter through the conduits beneath the city walls. The drying up of the Euphrates River has also uncovered a cave and other ancient ruins. People have found caverns and caves with unusual shapes that are not typical of any caves that a human might have built. Some of these caves resemble jail bars used to keep someone or something in prison in a startling way. Archaeologists and even regular folk have documented a variety of horrifying sounds coming from the ground, in addition to these strangely shaped caves. Some people have said that the sounds are groans and cries of agony that will give you nightmares and make your skin crawl. People have captured groans and growls, some have even claimed to have heard sounds that might be compared to moving chains coming from beneath the earth. Some believe the drying riverbed to be a fulfillment of end-of-the-world prophecies found in the Bible. Has anyone kept track of the four fallen angels trapped beneath the Euphrates River's waters? What about the sounds made by the scorpion-like beast that is ejected from Earth in Revelation 9? Religious authorities have claimed that this is the fulfillment of a biblical prophecy, but it still leaves a significant unanswered question. If the Euphrates is actually drying up, does that mean fallen angels will soon appear to exterminate one-third of humanity? Everyone agrees on the location of the odd tunnel beneath the riverbed, which may hold the fallen angels mentioned in the Bible. 
even if many people have questioned the reality of the sounds coming from the pit. Who are the fallen angels held captive below the Euphrates? Revelation chapter 12, 7 to 9 reveals who the angels were that were beneath the Euphrates. According to the Bible, then war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought back. But he was not strong enough, and they lost their place in heaven. The great dragon was hurled down, that ancient serpent called the devil or Satan, who leads the whole world astray. He was hurled to the earth and his angels with him. The fallen angels who were cast down with Satan in accordance with Revelation 9 include the four angels under the Euphrates. You can see some of the fallen angels who were among the one-third of angels chosen by the devil were not permitted to wander freely on the earth like the others, but were instead chained or bound until the appointed time when you read Luke chapter 10 verse 17 and Revelation chapter 12 verses 7 to 9 and Jude chapter 1 verse 6. These angels were probably violent and could have endangered the survival of humanity, so God had to confine them. Among the chained angels, the four angels of the Euphrates are clearly identifiable. According to Revelation chapter 9, they will be released from the Euphrates to carry out biblical prophecies that call for the smiting of one-third of the earth. These inquiries have raised more concerns than they have answered, but what is undeniably true is that the Euphrates River Basin is in danger of becoming a desert, which would result in a drop in annual precipitation and the drying up of the river, wiping away approximately 40% of the area. But why is the river drying up according to science? Despite the complexity of the problem, factors such as violence, indiscriminate dam building and climate change have all led to a water crisis that jeopardizes the livelihoods of millions of people in the region. If nothing is done, the Euphrates and Tigris rivers in Iraq would dry up in 20 years, according to studies from the Water Ministry. Unfortunately, close to 98% of Iraq's surface water supply comes from these two rivers. As soon as 2040, Iraq might cease to have rivers. Iraq's annual temperatures are rising at a rate that is approximately twice as fast as average for the world, according to Barclay Earth a non-profit group that conducts climate research in California. The world has warmed by an average of 1.3 degrees Celsius since the late 1800s, while Iraq warmed by a startling 2.5 degrees Celsius. On the other side, the human-caused portion of the Euphrates issue starts more than 1,000 kilometers upstream in eastern Turkey, below the Taurus Mountains. For years, the Turkish government has been constructing dams to expand agricultural areas and provide electricity. Both the Ataturk Dam and the Kaban Dam on the Upper Euphrates were finished by the year 1990. On the Tigris and Euphrates rivers, a $32 billion project to construct 22 dams and 19 hydroelectric plants will eventually provide one quarter of Turkey's electrical needs. Syria also constructed a few other dams on the Euphrates and its tributaries before the civil war, including the Tabqa Dam upstream from Raqqa. The amount of water flowing into Iraq has decreased by nearly two-thirds since the Turkish and Syrian dams were constructed in the 1970s. Iraqis have been at odds with both of their neighbors over their fair share of the water for decades. The battle was about to escalate when Turkey and Syria diverted the Euphrates River into a series of reservoirs, effectively drying out the rivers downstream in Iraq. In order to connect the Euphrates River to Lake al thathar northwest of Baghdad, the Iraqi government constructed a network of canals. By 2035, the Euphrates River will only be three-quarters full of its original capacity, according to the Iraqi ministry. Iraq will fall short of 80% of its yearly requirement of 53 million cubic meters when combined with the loss of the Tigris water. Furthermore, the Tigris-Euphrates loses groundwater the fastest other than India, according to a recent NASA and German government satellite study. Iraq is one of the nations that will experience extremely severe water stress by 2040, 
according to the World Resources Institute, a non-profit environmental group based in the United States. The impacts of the Euphrates drying up are already being felt by the Iraqi people. Relief agencies claim that the present water crisis in Iraq is already endangering at least 10 million lives and restricting access to food and energy. Northwest Iraq's wheat production could decrease by as much as 70%. The irrigation system would need to be fully redone in order to alleviate the situation, which might cost between 60 and 80 billion dollars, money that the struggling nation simply does not have, suggesting that starvation is imminent. In addition, as dams fail, the amount of electricity available reduces, impacting the operation of hospitals and other crucial infrastructure. Are you certain that biblical prophecies are what is being fulfilled at this time, or do you think the situation is the product of local politics and climate change? Let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching another episode of Voyager. While you're still here, make sure to click the video on your screen for more mind-blowing videos about space.